What is up, everybody? It is Alex, the boogeyman here from Title Boxing Club in Rochester with your focus point of the week. And this week, we're talking to Killer B and the brand. What are we working on? What's our focus point? Let it go. How do you maintain speed and form during burnout? That is an interesting question indeed and something I notice a lot when we do burnout. So I'm gonna talk about some of the issues that I see when people do burnouts and some ways, some particular things to keep in mind when you're doing them. All right guys, so when we talk about burnouts, we're talking about rapid fire, non-stop punches on the back. Just non-stop, non-stop, no breaks, no footwork, no combinations, no other moves at all, no defense, just rapid fire punches over and over and over again, anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds. And it's understandable that most people probably look at this as a cardio push. I mean, that is what it is. You're going non-stop, you're getting that heart rate up, pushing that cardio, pushing that conditioning. But I don't want you to just look at it that way. I want you to look at it two ways. And I want you the other way, besides cardio, is technique. Burnouts are an opportunity for you to practice your technique because they are repetitive. As I said, you're generally stationary. You're generally not moving. I mean, sometimes we can add that in, sure. You're generally not doing defense. You're generally, it's not a combination. You don't have to remember anything complicated. You don't have to do anything else. You just have to fire those punches over and over and over again. And you can look at any sport, anybody at the top level in their sport, someone like Kobe Bryant or Tom Brady. How many shots did Kobe Bryant take after practice over and over and over again? How many passes did Tom throw after practice or during the off season to get himself better and better? That's if you look at anybody at that level, you will notice it's repetition. They do the same thing over and over again. Burnout is our opportunity to make our technique better. So when we throw burnouts, you don't necessarily want to go super fast or super hard right away. Sometimes we have different ones. We'll say speed or power, whatever, maybe, but even still, I would start for even just the first second or two, get the technique down. So for throwing jab crosses, make sure you've got the right distance from the bag, you're getting full extension, you're bringing those hands back, you're keeping the elbows in, you're turning your hips, you're turning your shoulders, you're doing all the things you're supposed to do on a jab cross. You can start like that, and then once you start to get it down, you can start to speed it up, go a little bit faster. You don't wanna cut corners on the technique, but you get into a good rhythm of the technique first. So along those lines, I'm gonna talk about some issues that I see a lot over and over again when we do burnouts where technique starts to fall apart and we are gonna start with that jab cross. So as I just said, you wanna bring your hands back. What I see a lot is hands dropping and there's a couple ways they do it. So first of all, when someone might throw a punch, it hits and then it drops, it hits and it drops. This is probably more common than you realize. I see this so much. Sometimes the hands never even come back. If it's just jab cross, it's just right there, just going, 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 going. Yeah, you're throwing straight punches, but I want you to work on your jab and your cross. So I want you turning. I want those hands coming straight back. I want you to bring them back to the cheek. And like I said, you can go fast and still do that. As soon as it lands, you bring it straight back. You don't let it drop down. You bring it straight back. That's the number one thing I see with jab crosses. All right, so now we're going to talk hooks. And first of all, hooks are harder. This is something I see with all hooks, not just in burnouts, because they're coming from east to west, west to east, not north to south. They're not going straight ahead. They're coming in from the side, a little more awkward, a little more difficult. What I often see are people using their arms and not their body to throw the hooks. And it is true, maybe when you're going really fast, you're gonna use more arm than you normally do. But I'll see this, it's just all arms. I want you to still use your body to the up. A little bit of arm, but you're still turning those hips. You're still rotating. You're pointing your toe in the direction of the hook. You're screwing your feet into the floor when you're throwing hooks over and over again. Now, occasionally I will see the opposite almost, where the arms are just totally stationary and it's just turning, which if you're turning your body, that's fine. And it's good to get in that habit, but you wanna still bring the hands back when you land the hook. And you do want that little bit of arm swing that follows the body turning. It's a subtle thing, but it's very important. Uppercuts, okay, very similar issue, right? People using the arms, using the biceps to throw uppercuts for speed. Again, you might use a little more arm than normal. You're not maybe gonna get that real big, powerful, bam, uppercut. You lift it up with those legs, turning with those hips, Mike Tyson style, but you still need to engage that lower body. So you're still lifting, you're still dropping up with those hips. Even when you're going fast, you're lifted to the chin, 
None of this, none of this, that's not using your legs. And it's not doing you any favors either. So, uppercuts, I want you using those legs, using those hips. Don't forget about them, even when we're going fast. And as I said, get into a good rhythm first, and then you start to bring it up. All right, last but not least, body shots, right? Now this, it's okay to drop your hands. And just like coach, you wanna use your body. You don't just wanna go like this. But another thing I notice with body shots is the posture, oftentimes. You, people will get kind of straight up and down, and they're just sort of, they're not in a good athletic position. So that if anything happened, they're not able to move or react to it. You wanna be a little more hunkered down, a little more bent, a little bit of your head tip forward. Not a lot, not like old school boxers going like this, but you do want a little bit of a tip forward when you're throwing those body shots, taking down and turning into them. So that if you did have to defend yourself, you'd be ready. In fact, that's something I'm gonna say for all of these burnouts. Even if it's just a burnout and there's no defense at all, you never want to be in a position where you couldn't defend yourself. Oftentimes the burnouts, I like to call out, roll, you know, because you're throwing all these body shots. Maybe a hook comes at your head, you got to be ready to defend. You know, or you're throwing jab crosses, you got to be ready to block, slip, roll, or even step back, get back into it. You always got to be ready to do something, even if it's just stationary burnouts. You know, hook, same thing. You, got, you might have to block, you might have to roll. Always put that in your mind when you're doing these. That will help keep your technique better. Technique better equals better workout too. Again, these things go hand in hand. That's a beautiful thing. Get better at boxing, get better at technique, get in better shape, get a better workout. That is what the sweet science is all about. I want you to follow that sweet science and always remember, technique is everything.